You're listening to the Caramel Apples Podcast, a podcast that dials up thoughtful, heartwarming nostalgia of all things great and retro in the golden era of pop culture and beyond. This week, we're diving into the intriguing history of the popular retro video game, Super Mario Brothers. Now, here's your host, Kennedy Rizzo and Cooper Lee. is what our podcast is all about. It's a powerful feeling that easily takes us back to a much better time for so many of us, really. Mm -hmm. We relive, you know, memories, emotions, and experiences that make and shape our lives to what it is currently. Yes, yes. People get real excited whenever they see things that remind them, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you and I included, (laughs) right? (laughs) Yes, definitely. (laughs) It reminds us of our childhood um, because so often it triggers an emotional reaction or response almost instantaneously. I agree, Kennedy. You know, the 80s were a goldmine decade of wistful, wonderful nostalgia And even in the early days, Mm -hmm. video games were just getting started to take off and eventually take over and establishing itself as, you know, a key part of pop culture. Yes. Mm -hmm. That awesomeness that we remember fondly. So one may ask, whatever could we be talking about? Right. (laughs) (laughs) What will we be diving into this week, Kenich? It's funny you should ask. (laughs) (laughs) Well, actually, we will be diving into the fascinating components of one of the greatest best-selling video games of all time, Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and we're super excited and ready to travel back in time and comb through this caramelicious highlight on where this huge marker and pop culture mainstay made its debut. So are you with us? You orchard archivers, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> I was going to say, well, they're here, so they better be. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and stay. No. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so jumping right in, I'm ready to revisit our chosen retro topic this week. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah so, so there's so many interesting things we've honed in on in talking about Super Mario Brothers. Um, we... We're tried and true fans of this game and our friends and our girl squad. (laughs) (laughs) We're all head over heels obsessed playing this game. Oh, we really were. (laughs) But our subject matter this week was literally the Holy Grail for someone we know and love in particular and that is our younger brother. <laughs> Him again. <laughs> he keeps popping up from our memories, apparently. Yeah, what is that all about? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? He was such a fan. Oh, yeah. Understatement. <laughs> and currently still is. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. I don't know. That is the. Really the understatement of the year. (laughs) (laughs) Little bro, like everyone else, um, has a few things in his arsenal that he's drawn to in the way of, you know, retro and nostalgia. So it's of no secret that Super Mario Brothers was truly standout and special to him. Mm -hmm. I believe to this day, his text alerts on his smartphone um, it's a Mario laughing triumphantly. <laughs> it's really cute, and it happens at the most inopportune times for him. It really does. Yeah. <laughs> but he totally loves it, and everyone who knows and is close to him, they're 110% aware that this is his longtime text alert. <laughs> and his ringtone, as we've shared before in, in other um, retro tracks, is still the Knight Rider's opening theme song. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah, he's such a hot mess. I mean, he just is. <laughs> <laughs> that means he 
got to go on the lookout for these things, right? I mean, because oh. just not everybody's going to have this. And he's like, oh, but I will. <laughs> he's rotten. He is. His poor wife. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so true. And due to this, um, this orchard trek is devoted to him this week and all of his fond nostalgic recollections of his favorite retro video game of all time, Super Mario Brothers. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so with that nice preface and nod to our show, what do we have to share? Oh, I'm ready, Coop. Okay, so Super Mario Brothers is a platform video game produced in the mid-80s, 1985 to be exact, mm -hmm. and internally developed by Nintendo NAD. Um, and published by Nintendo as a pseudo sequel to the 1983 game Mario Brothers. Not surprisingly, it was originally released in Japan for the Family Computer or Famicom on September 13, 1985, and later for the Nintendo Entertainment System, or more popularly known as NES, first here in the North America, 1985. Next in Europe in May 15th, 1987, and then in Australia in 87. Fun fact, Super Mario Brothers is the first of the Super Mario game series. Oh, it's already getting interesting, Cooper. <laughs> in the game, the actual game to be played, the player controls Mario naturally in a two-player setup. Um, a second player controls Luigi, Mario's brother. <laughs> And as he, they travel through the Mushroom Kingdom in order to rescue Princess Toadstool from the antagonist Bowser, or more commonly known as King Koopa. <laughs> oh, King Koopa. <laughs> <laughs> Kennedy, this truly brings back great memories. Yes. So we'll get more into the synopsis of Super Mario Brothers, as well as peering more into the characters here in a bit. We sure will. <laughs> but check this springboard fun fact out. Fun fact. For those wondering what happens after you find the princess, the game restarts from world one. But now with many of the characters from the higher levels. Ah. Yes. So you get things like flying turtles, the green thing that throws axes. <laughs> <laughs> the crawling things are replaced by black bulletproof things etc so the game restarts but gets harder more intensified that was such a, a girly uh description of what we remember of the game i love it <laughs> <laughs> that's just how it is you just have to deal with it right huh listeners? exactly exactly <laughs> <laughs> i approve <laughs> so this version of the game is extremely common here in the states at least that's what and how we remembered it right cooper yeah <laughs> Millions of copies, units of it have been manufactured and produced and sold here in the U.S. Super Mario Brothers was incredibly successful, both in a critical and commercial sense. So, fun fact. Did you know that in 1988, Super Mario Brothers was re-released along with the shooting range game entitled Duck Hunt? <laughs> <laughs> As part of a single ROM cartridge, which came packaged with the NES as a package part of the console action set. Yes, I do remember the old Duck Hunt game. <laughs> <laughs> it came along with this clunky, supposed hunting rifle we'd use to do just that. <laughs> Hunt. <laughs> remember, Coop, you could shoot the dog? <laughs> <laughs> He'd be like, he'd get going, he'd go, and he'd jump over into the weeds. <laughs> yes. And every time you'd miss the duck, he'd come up and make fun of you. Yeah, it'd be like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. So, like, if he got shot, maybe that was on him. Oh, no. <laughs> Bad mutt. No doubt. <laughs> when this Nintendo console came out with all of the toys, bells, and whistles for the time, people ate it up. Oh, completely. Completely. Yeah, like we couldn't get enough of diving into the gaming world playing both Duck Hunt and Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> Me too, Kennedy. Yeah, I vividly remember this back then. Oh, yeah. So Super Mario Brothers was designed, set up in such a way 
that helped popularize the side-scrolling platform game genre. And it was said that it served as a killer app for NES. So I have another fun fact. Okay. Fun fact. Speaking in terms of how very successful Super Mario Brothers was, to give it some context, get this. Upon its release in Japan, 1.2 million copies were sold during its September 1985 release. Mm. Yes. More than a million copies of NES was sold in 1986. More than 4 million by 88. 9.1 million by mid 1989. Are you keeping track of all these? <laughs> Trying to. Good grief. Those numbers are going up. Hey, we're not done. Oh, oh. <laughs> 18.7 million by early 1990. And more than 20 million copies units by 1981. Yes, I remember and recall the look of the game on screen as we played. <laughs> <laughs> that is so very nostalgic. Uh, indeed, Kennedy. So I'm right there along with you. <laughs> I recall that fondly as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, so another fun fact, um, with all these crazy statistics and numbers connected to the success and reach swirling around Super Mario Brothers, open your ears on the collective. <laughs> More than 40 million copies of the original NES version. <laughs> Whoa. Version. <laughs> 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 has been sold globally by 1994 and 40.23 million copies um, by April of 2000, for which it was, here it is, awarded the Guinness World Record for best-selling video game of all time. Okay, so that's not surprising, but great. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes, that's amazing, but completely, like you said, not surprising. Facts, Coop! <laughs> 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 and this most interesting information, statistics, are all in line for a legendary retro video game. Um, one from a front row seat perspective we got to personally experience. Yeah, and little bro was <laughs> and still is mesmerized <laughs> by the advent of Mario, as we are pretty certain that he too, along with his old school comrades, <laughs> extend a collective Thank you to the creators and distributors. <laughs> yeah, he just got done hanging out with one of his ride or die comrades. You know? Yes, they are like one and the same. You see one, oh. you've seen the other, whether you yeah. ever met them or not. <laughs> yeah, so our little bro is the caramel version and his buddy is the vanilla variety. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but they are one and the same. <laughs> it's totally awful. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> So specifically on that note, Koopa Dill. <laughs> <laughs> Super Mario Brothers was designed by Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka as a grand combination of the Famicom's team, three years of game mechanics and programming, drawing from their experiences working on what was called Devil World, a maze video game 2 developed and published by Nintendo for the NES. And the side scroller games, uh, Excite Bike and Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in order to advance their earlier work on the showcasing, platforming future athletic games, if you will. Like what we remember is Donkey Kong and the original <laughs> Mario Brothers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a mouthful. <laughs> well, yes, it was, but you handled it like a professional. <laughs> yeah, in and out, breathe air. <laughs> 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 that's right the fun <laughs> fact so based on that explanation Kennedy just shared Long now ended. you know <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> so now you know that the design of the first level of world 1-1 actually serves as a tutorial for the platform game I have another fun fact yes okay. there are many <laughs> <laughs> so you can't leave until you get them all. <laughs> Shucks, darn. <laughs> we'll hold you prisoner like King Koopa. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so fun fact. In Super Mario Brothers, uh, the players control Mario, the protagonist of the series. And then we have Mario's brother Luigi. That's controlled by player two in the game's multiplayer mode. 
and assumes the same plot role and functionality as Mario. Mm -hmm. As many a hardcore fan knows, the objective is to race through the Mushroom Kingdom, survive the main antagonist, King Koopa's forces, (laughs) and my forces. (laughs) 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 And save Princess Toadstool. Bring on the fun. Oh, totally. Bring on that fun. (laughs) Man, this is classic. (laughs) Well, Super Mario Brothers oftentimes is cited as one of the greatest video games of all time, um, specifically with praise and adulation given for its precise controls. Mm. It really is the OG when you think of awesome retro video games. Right? Yeah. Our brother thoroughly enjoyed it. (laughs) <laughs> like you said he still appreciates and enjoys it <laughs> and koopa we really did too you right right <laughs> we did and as you just stated they wouldn't tout it as such as one of the best-selling games of all time for nothing mm-hmm. and eventually revealing that more than 58 million copies being sold globally mm. Mm-hmm. world domination i would say at this point oh I, that's yeah yeah <laughs> so there's bound to be a fan or two or ten bouncing around out there in suburbia somewhere <laughs> 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 talk about a vast fan base oh and here we are <laughs> yes <laughs> so like this is we talk about our girl squad <laughs> And we were with them when we discovered Super Mario Brothers. Yes. Yes. This is crazy. I mean, like, so one of our friends, it was her dad that was the gamer. (laughs) And when we could pry the controls out of his cold, dead hands, we could play. (laughs) I mean, it was that he was a gamer. (laughs) She's not exaggerating. So like we would have a good time when we could play, but man, like we we it we were pulled in, we were sucked yes. in. Yes, and it was so much. It was mesmerizing. Like we it would get home from the pool or doing something fun, we were like straight to the game, straight to the TV, <laughs> and it was like he was gone or something. It had to have been because otherwise we wouldn't have touched it. But um, yeah. Duck Hunt and Super Mario Brothers, that was the bee's knees. And that was at their place that we got <laughs> connected to it. That Thank you. <laughs> good times, good times, Little Caesars Pizza, VHS tape, all that. <laughs> oh, you named it. You named all of it. Yes, that was definitely the slumber party hub. Oh, totally. <laughs> their house was always where it was at. <laughs> yeah, that was our, yeah, that was the greatest. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Cooper. This is quite possibly the greatest, most nostalgic game in history. I mean, really. We weren't what you would call big gamers by any means per se, but we love playing Super Mario Brothers. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) Super Mario Brothers will always be a classic in its own right. Mm -hmm. Oh man, the (laughs) countless number of hours we spent playing this retro treasure with our girls. (laughs) (laughs) good times buddy it really was Kenich. i know i know and and personally playing on the nes the nintendo you know enjoying super mario brothers legit was the first game i ever played or cared about yes um, but since it was such a fresh new concept coming up this whole conglomerate became such an amazing masterpiece yes Much like so much else we've discussed concerning nostalgia, whenever you actually have or take an opportunity to play or think of the great times back then we would play it, um, Mm -hmm. Super Mario Brothers, although considered somewhat primitive in current times, (laughs) but you know, still back then in the mid 80s, this game showed the world just how much you can do with eight bits. (laughs) heard loud and clear it did (laughs) and two the music and or the soundtrack is a masterpiece on its own Mm -hmm. i mean it's so memorable truly it was so cool being a kid coming back up in the mid 80s yes yes i don't know i like we say the same thing all the time but we can't stress it enough (laughs) 
it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but just imagine for a minute the focus and imagination that ignited for any given young one playing this vintage masterpiece. I mean, how Super Mario Brothers was one of their first never-ending Wonderland adventures that they dove into and explored. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, many of the young ones at that time were even able to complete half of the stages. <laughs> I know I was one of them. (laughs) But who cares? They, we were having fun. Truly, truly. It was all about the fun. It was. And Super (laughs) Mario Brothers was such an engaging fantasy. A true fantasy right there. But the tried and true hardcore fans going out there, like Lil Ro, Super Mario Brothers was never just a game for them. Oh, no. (laughs) <laughs> it was a most raw pure emotion yeah that raw emotion experience now is what we call and happily talk about all of the time and that is nostalgia 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 such an incredible feeling it is it is <laughs> and and that fun nostalgia when dialed up takes us back to a time when as we've previously described we would play this game with our friends mm-hmm And that time was nice because we mostly were still happy younger ones, you know, living mostly a more innocent existence, um, not having to worry about making a living and paying bills Mm -hmm. or worrying about other common adult problems we now face on the daily. Exactly. You know, for me, just like you personally, um, and as revealed here and there over the years with Lil Bro um, in Super Mario Brothers, this is where gaming truly began. Uh-huh. Um, I do vaguely remember, I don't know if you'll remember too, um, there was a game that was on a cassette tape, like um, for a computer that would have like a cassette tape cartridge. Oh, do you remember? It, I think it was called Buck Rogers. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I knew where you'd go. <laughs> <laughs> How about that, Bucky? <laughs> <laughs> what was his little friend's name? Twiggy? Twiggy. I think it was Twiggy. Bitty, 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 bitty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you're right. That was really our first game because that was on our cheap little I don't but know, I kind don't... of computer. What else computer it was? I don't know. I don't remember. But was that after we had already played? Um, Super Mario Bros. I can't remember exactly the timeline of it. That might have been after we'd already had a taste of playing a real game. <laughs> that <laughs> could have been because I mean, like that thing was junky. Like, oh my god! <laughs> we were so proud of it, though. We were thought, like, man, we were way behind and stuff like that. We weren't the trendsetters when it came to tech and all that. Not at all. We're still not. <laughs> <laughs> we're still a little behind. <laughs> Oh, well. Yes, <laughs> yes. Catching up, though. Ah. So, um, but, you know, this game is such a classic, you know, that is Super Mario Brothers. Um, oh, yeah. Right, the right. sound, the, the sprites, the, the gameplay, you know, it's still challenging to try and beat, and it's overall fun to play. Mm-hmm. It really can be likened to a work of art, in a sense. Oh, you speak the truth on that, Coop. <laughs> <laughs> Like you said, this game carved a huge place out in our childhood. Mm-hmm. Man, I remember playing this game for hours on the NES. <laughs> These developers who crafted and designed Super Mario Brothers are bona fide legends. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I know personally it taught me patience and determination. <laughs> Boy, did it ever teach you some mad determination, right? <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> You know, for us to just get up, dust yourself off after falling, and try, try again. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And see, playing Super Mario Brothers um, taught us valuable, caramelicious life lessons after all. It did. (laughs) This gives me so much nostalgia. We played this with our girl squad. (laughs) On repeat, all through the late 80s and early 90s. And, and part of that most wonderful nostalgic feeling came in hearing the music and familiar sounds contained therein. But one of the raw downsides to nostalgia is that then you realize how life has changed so much. You know, friends come and go and 
all we have left are our fond memories. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But um, I do remember mom had had an accident, our mama. Um, it, she had stepped on a nail. A rusty nail. Yes. Um, and did not take herself to the hospital right away. She didn't go to later on during the day when her foot got, you know, see exceedingly worse anyway i think yeah. she ended up having like a 10-day hospital stay out of yeah, that she did and, and uh our data you know he was not one to cook you know he will burn toast if you let him so um, <laughs> <laughs> he's like what do i do with these kids so um, <laughs> he rented the nes um for us to play you know from the local video store because they did that they had to because they were up and coming too, you know. They're like, "Oh yeah, you can rent games and the consoles here." So we were like, "Yeah, we're all about that life." And we begged that poor guy mercilessly. We wouldn't we... give him peace. <laughs> <laughs> so happily, he caved because he, you know, he had more important things to worry about, like working and taking care of mom. So and hiding from us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, hiding from us. <laughs> so we actually had some. Domino's pizza as well, you know, oh, while we were yum. playing these games. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy time. <laughs> and we had a good time with little bro because, like, the three of us got, we, you know, we had a lot of time to play the game together during that time. Like, you know, we're worried about our mom. and Yes. But then we got to hang out, the three of us together. We're all much younger, of course, but it was fun. It was bittersweet time, but we had fun together. We really did because we are a close bunch. We are. Yeah, much to our brother Sagarin. <laughs> yeah, we're playing a game day coming up this Monday. <laughs> much to our Sagarin. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's funny how the music and everything, it takes us right back to all the fun that could be had and found on that old analog TV. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> right? <laughs> no, but in all seriousness, though, looking back now, it really is the smallest things that matter to the most. <laughs> <laughs> to be repeated once again, we truly lived through such an awesome era. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now, back to the show. be repeated once again we truly lived through such an awesome era amazing (laughs) (laughs) so again the synopsis of super mario brothers was within the fantasy setting of the mushroom kingdom Um, that was a tribe of turtle-like creatures known as the koopa troopas (laughs) Yes, they invade the kingdom and uses the magic of its King Bowser, or better known as King Koopa. That's how we like to talk to him now. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, <laughs> some distant relatives of yours, Koop? <laughs> Koopa do. <laughs> oh, <can I> just... <laughs> hmm, I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> hey. Anyways. <laughs> So King Koopa would get busy turning its inhabitants, known as the Mushroom People, into inanimate objects such as bricks, stones, and horsehair plants. <laughs> King Koopa and his army also kidnap Princess Toadstool, the Princess of Mushroom Kingdom, and Mario and or Luigi are the only ones with the ability to reverse Bowser's, or rather King Koopa's, spell. <laughs> <laughs> So after hearing this news, Mario sets out to save the princess and free the kingdom from King Koopa. So after traveling through various parts of the kingdom and fighting King Koopa's forces along the way, Mario reaches King Koopa's final lair and stronghold, 
where he is able to defeat him by striking an axe on the bridge suspended over lava he's standing on. <laughs> Breaking the bridge, defeating King Koopa, freeing the princess, and saving the Mushroom Kingdom. Oh, wow, Kennard. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this just so brings back great memories, for real. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when we played just nice and easy as we progressed in the game? You know, playing Super Mario Brothers as it was intended instead of rushing through, you know, using the infamous warp yo of <laughs> warp zones. Oh, now I love the warp zones. <laughs> I remember getting to the water level and thinking it was so cool. Yes, because they're cute. They are cute swimming yeah. around. <laughs> and the little noises that they make. Yes, that was cute. <laughs> So we'll briefly backtrack for a second and talk about the whole side-scrolling design contained and baked into the Super Mario Brothers model, um, where again the player moves to the right to eventually reach the flagpole at the end of each level. Yeah, the game world included coins from Mario and Luigi to collect and special bricks marked with a question mark, which when hit from beneath or below by Mario or Luigi, this action may reveal more coins to collect or yet another special item. Okay, so the other special item or secret you just highlighted there oftentimes was invisible bricks containing more coins or rare items. Mm. Fun fact. If the player gains a super mushroom, do you remember how Mario grows to double his size and acquires the ability to break bricks above him? <laughs> <laughs> if Mario gets hit in this mode, then instead of dying, he shrinks and turns back to regular size Mario. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Players start with a certain number of lives and may have the opportunity to gain additional lives by picking up green spotted orange one-up mushrooms hidden in the bricks <laughs> or by collecting a hundred coins defeating several enemies in a row with a signature koopa shell mm -hmm. or bouncing on enemies or the opponent successfully without touching the ground mario loses his life if he takes a hit or does take on damage while small falls into a bottomless pit or simply runs out of time <laughs> The game ends when the player runs out of lives, although a button input can be used on the game over screen to continue from the first level of the world in which the player expired or died. That's right. Mario's primary attack is jumping on top of enemies' opponents. Um, the many opponents have various different responses to this. <laughs> For instance, a Goomba will flatten and be defeated, while a Koopa Troopa will uh, temporarily retract into its shell, allowing Mario to utilize it as a projectile. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> and these shells may be deflected off a wall to destroy other enemies, though they can also bounce back against Mario, <laughs> which will hurt or kill him. <laughs> Real quick, what didn't Yoshi belong to Super Mario Brothers? Yeah. He was, uh, wasn't he like a pet turtle that they could ride? Or a dinosaur, I don't know. Yeah, he was something that they could ride. But yeah, he was definitely like on their side, I think. Oh, totally adorable. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so I don't know. Well, I know Mario's got tons of franchises, so I don't know if he belonged. He wasn't in this one, was he? I don't think so. Yeah, I think he might come out in the second one, maybe. Okay. Cheese would be a good one to ask. <laughs> yeah, we might have to do that. <laughs> Other opponents or enemies, like the underwater foes with spike tops, cannot be jumped on and damage the player instead. <laughs> Mario can also defeat or overcome enemies above him by jumping to hit the brick that the enemy is standing on. Mario also can acquire the fire flower from certain question mark blocks. That when picked up, 
changes the color of Super Mario's outfit and allows him to throw fireballs. <laughs> now, a less known or common item is the Star Man, which often appears when Mario hits certain concealed or otherwise invisible blocks. This item serves to make Mario temporarily invincible to most hazards and capable of defeating enemies on contact. Yeah, so fun fact. As you know, or may be aware of, Super Mario Brothers consists of eight worlds with four sub-levels called stages in each world. The final stage of each world takes place in a castle where Bowser, or respectfully myself, King Koopa, (laughs) 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 is fought above a suspended bridge. And first of seven of these Bowsers, or King Koopas, are fake false Bowsers, who in actuality are minions disguised as Bowser, whilst the real McCoy Bowser is actually found in the eighth world. Spoiler alert! (laughs) Spoiler alert! (laughs) (laughs) We're spoiling it for ourselves. I don't think we've ever made it that far. I know. (laughs) I know I didn't. (laughs) So, Bowser and his decoys are defeated by jumping over them and reaching the axe on the end of the bridge although they can also be defeated using a fire flower so as we've previously described a decent summary again is that super mario brothers has some stages taking place underwater and containing different enemies two there are bonuses and secret areas in and all throughout the game and most secret areas contain more coins for mario and luigi to collect but some contained warp pipes that allow the brothers to advance directly to ladder worlds in the game without having to complete the intervening stages. Mm -hmm. So after completing the game once clear through, the player is thereby rewarded with the ability to replay the game with changes made to increase its intensity, such as all Goombas in the game (laughs) being replaced with Buzzy Beetle's enemy, uh, similar to Koopa Troopas, uh, <laughs> who cannot be defeated using Fire Flower. Super Mario Brothers was our gem. So it really wasn't hard to see, based on our most informative, nostalgic Orchard Retro track drizzled out this week, <laughs> um, is that Super Mario Brothers is frequently touted as one of the greatest video games of all time, with high praise and nods for its precise controls. Selling over 58 million copies worldwide to date and counting, as you just shared a little bit ago, Coop. Um, (laughs) Super Mario Brothers is credited alongside the NES as one of the key factors in reviving the video game industry after the 1983 crash. Yeah, you'll have to go check that particular event out. Mm. Um, It really was a thing that impacted the video game genre. But this too contributed to helping to popularize the whole side-scrolling platform game genre. So fun fact, did you know that the designer, composer for a Super Mario Brothers game soundtrack was carried out successfully by Koji Kondo? This right here helps to cement the fond memories of this game. Koji Kondo's uh, customized soundtrack is one of the earliest and most popular memory in video games, making music a centerpiece of uh, game design. That's totally a five caramel apple detail you shared right there, Coop. <laughs> <laughs> Golf clap. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so before we wrap up our discussion on Super Mario Brothers this week, we have a couple more interesting things to share with you, Orchard Archivers. So as you can imagine, Super Mario Brothers literally began a multimedia franchise firestorm, including a long-running game series, an animated television series. I totally remember the Super Mario Brothers cartoon. (laughs) (laughs) Again, our younger brother loved it. He was definitely a huge fan, if not the biggest fan. Oh, he sure was. (laughs) You have spoken facts, (laughs) Koopadil. But it also dialed up an animated feature film, a live action feature film, and one more upcoming animated feature film. Mm. Super Mario Brothers, the game too, has been re-released on most Nintendo systems. So it's of no surprise that Mario, Luigi, 
and the entity better known as Super Mario Brothers have truly become a very memorable and prominent part of pop culture. So on that note, the Super Mario Brothers series has inspired various media products. In 1986, we had the anime film Super Mario Brothers, a great mission to rescue... <laughs> 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 Roscoe, Roscoe. <laughs> Do we have a definition for that word? <laughs> okay. Super Mario Brothers, the great mission to rescue Princess Peach. That's better. <laughs> <laughs> Acknowledged as one of the first feature linked film movies to be based directly off of the video game, as well as one of the earliest examples of Isekai anime. Now I have a refresher fun fact to share. Fun fact according to creator, uh, Japanese video game designer Shigeru Miyamoto, Luigi is portrayed as the younger fraternal twin brother or sidekick of Mario, Nintendo's official mascot. Mario number one! Luigi appears in many games throughout the Mario franchise, many times accompanying his comrade, his brother. (laughs) (laughs) So a couple quick examples of the Super Mario Brothers teaming up and engaging in some wonderful adventures together was, one... In the live-action Super Mario Bros. film, making its theatrical release debut in 1993, starring the talented Bob Hoskins, from Who Framed Roger Rabbit fame, as titular character Mario. And, uh, you remember this? I do, I do. Yeah, this is like John Leguizamo, starring as little bro Luigi. (laughs) So it opened to mixed reviews, but I'm sure the fans probably enjoyed it. Uh, did you see it, Kenner? No. <laughs> I didn't I didn't see it, and I feel I didn't miss out on anything, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm quite bougie with my movies and my entertainment, you know, Coop. <laughs> I get it. I did see it. Um, I think oh, okay. it was something to watch. Okay. Um, it's probably a one, two star apple. Yeah. Oh, um, out of five, that's not that great. No, the the game is so much better, you know? Okay, okay. Well, then secondly, <laughs> <laughs> um, something I did catch a time or two was our next Super Mario Brothers nod to share is the animated TV series, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show. Um, that ran from 1989 to 1990. This starred the voice talents of famed professional wrestler Lou Albano as Mario and actor Danny Wells as Luigi. (laughs) Now, I did like the cartoon, which was a pretty big deal, and it came on Saturday mornings. (laughs) Very entertaining. And I actually love the fact that they used Captain Lou Albano to voice Mario. Like, Uh. yeah, he was the perfect voice casting for that, in my humble opinion. (laughs) (laughs) I can hear him in my head right now. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's him. What else do I hear? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know, so like you mentioned, um, using the voices that they chose, um, this really helped uh, liven up the story or scenario, which we could get into effortlessly. Mm-hmm. Uh, Super Mario Brothers Super Show was definitely a most memorable time. Really, a lot of those animated gems resonated with kids hardcore as part of the era of Sunday morning cartoons. Going strong (laughs) and all. (laughs) Do you mean Saturday? Yes. Did I say Sunday? You did. (laughs) That's okay, though. Maybe that was wishful thinking. It would carry on from Saturday morning into Sunday morning. There we go. (laughs) (laughs) But Kennedy, this is just another testament to how much and how big Super Mario Brothers is and the era of playing this wonderful retro game on the NES back in the day. 
This is true, Cooper. And and although we don't really do much gameplay these days currently, mm -hmm. um, it is nice to still be able to tap into the retro restores of our minds and hearts and finally think of and recall such warm memories and better times. Yeah. There's just no time anymore. Uh -uh. No. <laughs> <laughs> but another cool offshoot or spinoff version of Super Mario Brothers is the also entertaining Mario Kart. Oh, I love Mario Kart. <laughs> Mario number one. We, this is another one we actually enjoy playing. It's like on uh, family vacations and such. Yes. Right along with little bro. <laughs> 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 he makes us play this. <laughs> you will play this with me. Let's do this. <laughs> Good times indeed. Oh, absolutely. I remember when he got the game and how excited he was. And it was like, yes, we are going to play. Like, like you will be playing. You know this, right? <laughs> he was mesmerized. He was. But he's right. It's so much fun. Yes, it is. <laughs> 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 so how about you our orchard archivers what are some of your favorite memories characters or standout components you personally cherish while thinking about or playing super mario brothers reach back into your mental recesses and please share we'd love to hear some of your favorite nostalgic good times surrounding super mario brothers we sure would so <laughs> It was a lot of fun taking a few minutes in this week's Orchard Trek um, to talk about some of the fond memories and history we had surrounding the standout benchmark video game of the 80s, Super Mario Brothers, and we so enjoyed it. We sure did, Kennedy. <laughs> you know, and it is our hope that you too, our dear listeners, enjoyed briefly going down memory lane on this as well. Goombas, warp pipes, coins, one-up mushrooms, King Koopa, <laughs> and Princess Toadstool. The gaming world would never be the same without making its incredible mark on our recent history. And two, despite the new technologies and new games that are super abundant out right now, um, Super Mario Brothers remains one of the longest lasting games in history. For more than 40 years. <laughs> my yeah, mom. <laughs> that's a long time for video games. Literally, my God. Yeah, and they're still played today by many a hardcore fan. Yes. So how's that for longevity and immense staying power? <laughs> uh. And Duck Hunt and Legend of Zelda. We can't forget about these two awesome gaming offerings that too came along with NES. Yes. So what a time to be a kid. Yes. We Gen Xers and Xennials had it made. Yes. And at the time with Super Mario <laughs> Brothers, we never realized that we were playing one of the most influential video games ever. Cooper, practically everyone from the 70s, 80s, and even the 90s generation grew up with playing Nintendo games, Super Mario Brothers in particular. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That, thank goodness that Mario, Luigi, and Super Mario Brothers have become so prominent in pop culture. Legendary status has to be earned. And I think that Super Mario Brothers did its due justice. And that's a Carvel Apple rap. <laughs> And that's it for this week's episode. To make sure that you never miss out on another second of our Carmelicious podcast, meet up with us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcast fits. Bye for now, and thanks so much for listening. Whoa!